Dead Sea. It is already in Hez Hezazan Tamar. Alarmed, Jehoshaphat resolved to inquire of the Lord, and he proclaimed a fast for all Judah. Alarmed, he inquired of the Lord. It will happen in your life that you were living your life the way you were living it, and then there is a news, sometimes a very bad news. Regardless if you were a sinner, regardless of what you were doing, this is the time to be alarmed and to inquire of the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. Some people will beat themselves up saying, okay, oh, I was a sinner. This is the reason, so I'm going to die anyways. No. Regardless of your situation, this is the time to inquire of the Lord. The people of Judah came together to seek help from the Lord. Indeed, they came from every town in Judah to seek him. Then Jehoshaphat stood up in the assembly of Judah and Jerusalem at the temple of the Lord in front of the new courtyard and said, Lord, the God of our ancestors, are you not the God who is in heaven? You rule over all the kingdoms of the nations. Power and might and, and might are in your hands, and, and, and no one can withstand you. Amen. Our God, did you drive out the inhabitants of this land before your people Israel and give it forever to the descendant of Abraham, your friend? They have lived in it and have built in a sanctuary for your name, saying, if a calamity comes upon us, whether the sword of judgment or plague of fam famine, we will stand in your presence before this temple that bears your name and will cry out to you in our distress. And you will hear <clears throat> us and save us. <clears throat> but now, here are our men from Ammon, Moab, and Mount Seir, whose territory you will not allow Israel to invade when they came from Egypt. So they turned away from them and did not destroy them. See how they are repaying us by coming to drive us out of the possession you gave us as an inheritance. Our God, will you not judge them? For we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Amen. Brothers and sisters, this is a prayer we have a procedure here, how to, def to defeat the enemy. An enemy who is strong, an enemy who is coming from all the place. An enemy who is trying to take what God has given you. This is the procedure we have here. Hallelujah. Amen. All the men of Judah, with their wives and children, and little ones, stood there before the Lord. Amen. Brothers and sisters, some attacks... You need the entire family to participate. You need to bring the entire family on their knees and just proclaim, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We have no means to defend ourselves. This disease is eating me up. I have no power. I have tried everything. I am about to lose my employment. I have tried everything. I have no power. But my eyes are turned on you. Yes, That's it. Hallelujah. Amen. Then the Spirit of the Lord came on Jehaziel. He said, whatever it is. <laughs> he said, listen, King Jehoshaphat, and all who live in Judah and Jerusalem. This is what the Lord says to you. Do not be afraid or discouraged because of this vast army. For the battle is not yours, but God's. Hallelujah. Tomorrow, march down against them. They will be climbing up by the pass of Ziz. And you will find them at the end of the gorge of the desert of Jeruel. You will not have to fight this battle. Hallelujah. You will not have to fight this battle. Amen. 
Take up your positions. Stand firm and see the deliverance the Lord will give you, Judah and Jerusalem. Hallelujah. Do you see the result when you turn your eyes toward God? When your heart is turned toward God? And then we, when you proclaim, I decrease so you increase. I have no means to fight. I cannot fight these people, this multitude. But I count on you. Hallelujah. You, your wife, your children, the entire family on your knees. Do you understand why sometimes we proclaim a fast here? We say it's fast this Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday here. It's because of this. Sometimes prophetess and prophet will sense something and then will tell us we are fasting. It's not just because we want to lose weight. There is a reason behind that. And it is serious. So you take it seriously. Hallelujah. The answer here is very clear. Take your positions. Our position is in fasting. Our position is when we are on our knees. Our position is when we are praying. Hallelujah. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. Go out to face them tomorrow. Go out. to. God is going to fight your battle, but God is saying, you go. I am pretty sure many of us, if they ask you to go, they will have to push you. You, you go fight. I will fight for you, but you go. We need to go. We need to go to the battlefield. Hallelujah. And the Lord will be with you. Jehoshaphat bowed down with his face to the ground. And all the people of Judah and Jerusalem fell down and worshipped before the Lord. Then some Levites from the Kohathites and Korahites stood up and praised the Lord, the God of Israel, with a very loud voice. Early in the morning, they left for the desert of Tekoa. As they set out, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Listen to me, Jordan, people of Israel, of Jerusalem. Have faith in the Lord your God, and you will be upheld. Have faith in his prophets, and you will be successful. People of Cross Point Fellowship Church, have faith in your pastors and the prophets. Hallelujah. Have faith in the Lord, and you will be upheld. After consulting the people, Jehoshaphat appointed men to sing to the Lord and to praise him for the splendor of his holiness as they went out at the head of the, the army, saying, Give thanks to the Lord for his love endures forever. This was begin, beginning of the, the, the fight. The fight hasn't started yet. And then they are singing, they are praising, they are thinking, hallelujah. These things, you have to underline them in your Bible. Because that's how we fight. And that's how we win. Hallelujah. As they begin to sing and praise, the Lord set ambushes against the men of Ammon and Moab and Mount Seir, who were invading Judah, and they were defeated. As they were beginning, they began to sing. The Ammonites and Moabites rose up against the men from Mount Seir to destroy and annihilate and them. After they finished slaughtering, slaughtering the men from Seir, they helped to destroy one another. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Do you understand? When the men of Judah came to the place that overlooks the desert of, uh, and looked toward the vast army, they saw only dead bodies lying on the ground. No one had escaped. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God will fight your battle. I proclaim that God will fight your battle. Regardless of how strong your enemy is, regardless of whatever you're dealing with, God will fight your battle. I proclaim that he will destroy and heal, annihilate your enemy. Hallelujah. In the name of Jesus, Amen. how many people feel that? <clears throat> Maybe just a very few are dealing with problems. And I'm talking to that few. God will fight your battle. Amen. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. 
Brothers and sisters, there is a reason that I have been preaching on hope. There is a reason. There is a reason that I have been encouraging you to stand up and fight, Amen. to take back what belongs to you. Amen. There is a reason. The reason is very simple. Even though we declared 2018 the year of grace revolution, somehow, somehow, I sense it, I feel it, I know it. The devil found a way to convince some of you that the game is over. It's not over. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The devil convinced some of us the game is over. You have lost the battle. You will never make it. Your situation is impossible. I know it. I feel it and I sense it. I know. I know I look at you and I see defeat on you. I know. I know the devil has been saying, don't even bother. Brothers and sisters, when David went to fight Goliath, he was told by his own brothers, where are you going? Hmm? Get out of there. Go back there. Don't bother. This guy is strong. This guy will defeat everyone. They were standing on the top of a mountain, and the enemy was on top of the other mountain. That's how far they went. They, they couldn't even approach the, the enemy, and then they declared them, themselves that they, they have lost. Brothers and sisters, Davis was told, do not bother. It is impossible. You cannot do it. But Goliath went down. Uh -huh. I'm just here to, to encourage you just to say, be, do not be discouraged. Do not be intimidated by the enemy. As we just read, stand firm. Stand firm. God will fight your battle. Let me say it. Goliath will go down. Goliath will go down. Are you able to name your Goliath this morning? Are you able to face your Goliath this morning? Keep in mind for Goliath to go down, you got to approach him. Eh? You cannot stay on this mountain and he's over there and believe he's going to go down. He is not. You have to come closer. You have to face him. You have to go. Eh? You have to go and God is with you. Hallelujah. My role is just to keep you awake spiritually. Because I know you know. But I need to come and poke you when I see that you're about to sleep. I poke you again. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have to bring to you this awareness of who the enemy is and the enemy's tactics. Hallelujah. How many believe that? So you listen carefully. As we're talking right now, I sense that the enemy is partying. When the enemy says it's over, the enemy is not just telling you it's over. No, he will throw a party. He's partying already. He's celebrating his victory. Hallelujah. The battle is not over yet, eh? but he is celebrating already. I don't know if we have watched some uh, boxing uh, uh, matches. Have you watched like Muhammad Ali or whatever? Eh? Yeah. The people who are weak are the people who are going to talk a lot. Hmm? They will talk a lot. If you listen too much to what they're saying, you will defeat it. Because they will tell you, you are nothing. I'm going to punch you right now and then you'll go down. It's not even going to take two seconds, right? That's what the devil does. Intimidation. Hallelujah. Intimidation. Maybe the devil is celebrating for, for, for his victory or your defeat or your upcoming defeat. I don't know how they call it. But I am sorry for the, the, the devil. I am very, very, very sorry. The battle has just started has just started. Hmm? I didn't wear my gloves yet. What are you talking about? You have to stand firm 
and tell him clearly, I will, no, I will knock you out. Let, let me put my gloves on. Hallelujah. Knowing that actually you are powerless. Hallelujah. But the person who is behind you is powerful. Hallelujah. So for those who are struggling with some problems, let me proclaim right now that the game is not over yet. Yeah. You have to believe it. I mean, I don't care what you're going through right now, but you have to be able to say the game is not over yet. Hallelujah. Tell your enemy, if you have any enemy, you are celebrating a little, a little too early. Mm-hmm. Just wait, wait a little bit. Maybe you can have a chance to celebrate, but right now it's a little too early. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Because let's be clear here. The enemy does not know the end. My dad, my papa, my king, my redeemer, my Lord and Savior is the only one who knows the end. He knows the beginning from the end. So the devil has no clue. Let the devil throw a party. You go on your knees. You take your position. You stand firm as we just read. And let God act. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. I, I mean, this is a process. Don't reverse the process. Hallelujah. You have to come to the battlefield the Wednesday here. We're praying you come. And you stand firm. Hallelujah. Let the enemy do whatever they're doing. You stand firm. Whatever you're going through may be hurting you regardless, right? And then you stand firm. You believe that God will, will come on your behalf. Yeah. Hallelujah. Am I challenging someone here? Yeah. You have to know and understand that it's only God who has a final say. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Only God has a final say. So let me challenge everyone this morning. Whatever difficulties you're going through could be spiritual, financial, maybe physical, Maybe it's not yourself, it's your dad, it's your mom, it's your, your brother, it's, it's a family member. I'm here this morning to ask you to stand your ground, to be bold. I'm asking you, do not throw the towel too early. Do not. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Instead, claim firmly that Jesus is my Lord and Jesus is the only one who has the final say. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 I know why half of the congregation is silent. It's because facts, man, facts are facts. <laughs> yes, facts are facts. When you are hurting, when you have lost 10, 20 pounds, it's visible. Eh? Everyone could see that you're sick. Maybe doctors have said, Oh, this is a stage four or stage five or final stage. And do you know, you read the papers, you went for testing again, and the same thing was, you were told the same thing again. Hallelujah. As long as you have breath, the game is not over yet. As long as you have breath, keep praising the Lord. Uh huh. You have no reason not to praise the Lord. Amen? Amen. I told you the story of this guy who went through an accident and then the person was, was dead. This is a true story. They bring an ambulance, they do everything they could, CPR and stuff, and, and then he could hear the, the, the beep of the machine. Ping, ping, ping. And then he heard the ping. He, he heard, and then he heard people saying, oh, we have lost him. Because for some reason, that machine does not lie. If he said, beep, beep, that means it's your heart. But if it goes, bing, that means goodbye, done, <laughs> ciao. He heard that. He heard people saying, okay, we have lost him. But he heard as well the voice of... He, he started having a conversation with the Lord. 
at that time. Nothing to do with what was happening. Brothers and sisters, Jesus has the final say. In the problem you have right now, he has the final say. Hallelujah. How many people here have received immigration papers saying, okay, uh, this is your deporting date. We're going to grab you and then chow. How many? But they are here. They have all the papers. Amen? You have to challenge the devil sometimes. We have lost him. And then he, he, he stood up and he said, what? And then they looked at him. The machine was still doing the... And then for some reason, they looked at the machine and then the machine changed the P for Pim, Pim, Pim. That was it. He got to the hospital sitting on his bed. A person who was just dead a few seconds before. It's not over yet, my friends. The game is not over yet. This is like a soccer game. In every soccer game, you have a referee and you have judges. The referee has the power, but the judges can tell him, actually, you just made a mistake. I think he, he listened to them. But this game we are in, brothers and sisters, Jesus is the referee and he is the judge as well. And more importantly, he is on our side. Hallelujah. What we need to do is show up and push that ball. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Deuteronomy chapter 20, verse 1 to 4 says, When you go out to battle against your enemies and seize horses and chariots and people more numerous than you, do not be afraid of them. For the Lord your God, who brought you up from the land of Egypt, is with you. When you are approaching the battle, the priest shall come near and speak to the people. He shall say to them, Hear, O Israel, you are approaching the battle against your enemies today. Do not be faint-hearted. Do not be afraid or panic or tremble before them. For the Lord your God is the one who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to save you. Hallelujah. Here, O oh, Cross Point Fellowship Church. Hallelujah. Amen. You are approaching the battle against your enemies today. Amen. Do not panic. Do not tremble before them. Amen. Our Lord is going with us. Amen. And he is in front of us. Amen. And he will defeat your enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you name your enemies? Are you able to name them? Because... The, Today, they are going to be defeated. Amen. You got to know your enemies. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. <clears throat> I want you today just to understand simply, God will fight for us. Amen. But we need at least to show up to the battlefield. If you go home, you forget what this guy was talking about. You need to show up to the battlefield. Hallelujah. Some of us, and this is true, are developing spiritual laziness. Laziness to engage spiritually, laziness to attend prayer meetings, laziness every day even to attend church services. And I'm very serious. I know we work, we work a lot. I do work, full-time job, and full-time after my full-time, my first full-time, and then full-time at home. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. But not everyone works as much. Some of you have two jobs, three jobs. But not everyone has two jobs. Amen? Amen? Not everyone is super, super busy. If the wife is looking after the kids, where is the husband? The battlefield is here. Here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of us are very confused, saying, oh, God loves me. Do, I, I won't bother going to church regularly. Sometimes, maybe one Sunday out of two, I can maybe show up. He loves me anyways. He will bless me. What is the deal? God's love is unconditional. 
I'm not disputing that. It is for everyone who wants it. But his blessings, his blessings, depend on whether your heart is turned toward him or not. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. His blessings, and for your heart to be turned toward him, it depends on your environment. Hallelujah. Who you hang around, what you do during your spare time, what you do at home. Your environment is very important. That's the reason we have services pretty much every single day of the week. If you take a small, a baby uh, sh uh, sh um, shark, you know the shark? The, the, you know the shark? The, okay. They are not small. They are very big and very dangerous. But if you take a baby one, a small one, you put it in an aquarium, he will probably go eight inches. He will be a small, a small shark in your, in your aquarium. But if you take the same baby, you bring it in the, the ocean, he will grow eight feet and he will be very dangerous up there. The same shock. So your environment will have an influence on you. Either you grow this much or you grow this much, depending on what you do. <laughs> Hallelujah. When you are in the wrong environment, wrong choices, before you know, you will become spiritually unfit. Absolutely. If your schedule after work is TV shows on Tuesday, when we have intercession here, you, you have an appointment with the seventh episode of Madam Secretary. Eh? <laughs> and Wednesday, it's Oprah. You cannot miss Wednesday because it's Oprah. But at that time on Wednesday, what is happening here? Pastor Sabit here he is uncovering faith. Eh? That's something you just miss. It's important. Faith, I define faith as a, a vehicle that drives you from your prayer to your blessings free of charge. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. You just miss that. When you need something, you pray quickly, and then you figure out nothing is happening. Eh? Because you have no faith. How can you have faith if you're not building up your faith? It's your environment that will help you build up your faith. Hmm? The vehicle that brings you to whatever is impossible to the possible. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. So let me talk to those who decide to turn their hearts toward God this morning. If you refuse that the devil won't mess you up, I have one advice, is to stay still. Amen. Stay still. Because you have taken a position already, you have turned your heart toward God already, you are at the right place already. You have your position already. You qualify to, to stand still. Hallelujah. Yeah. There is no way Jehoshaphat and these people could go toward the, the enemies if they did not know that God was with them, if they did not know that God was going to battle for them. But how would you know watching Oprah? I love her. She is fantastic. But here we're talking spiritually. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith comes from what you hear. But what you hear comes from the word of God, not Madam Secretary. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I know all the women, they're not saying amen. I know why. <laughs> Hallelujah. Let's be serious. Netflix will not increase your faith. Hallelujah. Uh -huh, I see all the, the people watching this. Thing. Oprah as well won't increase your faith. Hallelujah. <laughs> you cannot be facing life challenges the way we're facing them and hope to be still if front line on Friday is just optional. It is impossible. That's the day we break the walls. Hallelujah. If you're facing the challenges we are facing, and the front line is optional, my brother. You're not going to break any walls. You will break your own bones. Hallelujah. 
What do you want me to sell? These are the tools that God gave us to fight. Yes. Tuesday, intercession. Wednesday, teaching. Friday, front line. Those are the tools we have. Amen. Hallelujah. I know we live a time where it's democracy. People do whatever they want. Um, but we cannot fight the enemies the way we want. It is impossible. We fight the way God wants. And God this morning is telling us how to fight the enemies. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Amen. Because the weapon we're looking for, the weapon we need to fight, are spiritual weapons. Right. Amen. Amen. Yes, you cannot buy them. You, you Go to Walmart if you want. You won't find them. You will not find them online. Even Amazon does not have them. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. These are spiritual weapons. I hope you're taking notes this morning. Yes. We fight spiritually using the word of, of God. Verse 17 from what we just read says, Take your position and stand still. Take your position and stand still. Brothers and sisters, I, sometimes I give you here and there my testimony. You have probably heard me talking about Pastor Paul. No, you don't remember. So I'm going to remind you who is Pastor Paul. Some 20 years ago, prior to coming to Canada, we went through a very difficult moment. Uh, they were just killing people from my tribe. And um, I, they, they, they came to a house uh, to grab me because I was from the wrong tribe. This was a capital city. I was not living, I was living in, in the city center of everything. And soldiers came to my, my door. They knocked at the door. We, we saw them from, from the apartment. We saw them down there. And then we knew they were coming for me. They were going from houses to houses uh, and to find what they were calling enemies because we were from the wrong tribe. And the guy who knocked at my door had soldiers with very big guns. I mean, stuff that I only see in movies. Um, and he knew my wife. <laughs> when my wife opened the door, he said, oh, you live here? My wife said, yes. Hmm. Are you married to our enemies? My wife said, my husband is not an enemy. You, maybe you... He said, no, I was sent to this house. So I was behind her. I was from the wrong tribe. My wife was not. Uh, it's just evil. So the guy said, okay, come. I, I did not know where I was going. And then he said to my wife, okay, look, I promise you one thing. We're not going to kill him today. So imagine I'm right there, and you're telling my wife that you're now going to kill me today. I mean, this is a battle like what we just read here. Yeah. Brothers and sisters, I'm not going to tell you what happened after. It is for another day. But while I was struggling in prison for the first time in my life, uh, my wife was going around in the city, trying to find some help. And then here comes a guy who stopped her. I said, okay, listen, I have a word for you. God said, do not worry for your husband. Everything will go well. And then my wife said, who are you? Oh, he said, I'm Pastor Paul. And then he disappeared. We never seen him again. We don't know who he is. But I just remember he was Pastor Paul. From that time to the time where I was able to make it out of the country, a lot of things happened. I had to go to the battlefield. A lot of things happened. At some point, I left um, the prison, and then I went to hide again. And a true battle started. True battle. Every single night we were praying. Some friends came to live with us. 
two of my friends were pastors who were fasting, I think, three times a week. You can't imagine people who come to your house and fast with you. They have their own house. They have their own life. But they come to your house to fast with you and pray with you. Day after day after day. That's where I became a a, a true Christian. Yes, God has said everything will go well with me, but I was still living like in a prison. Hallelujah. A battle started, but I won that battle just because I took my position on the ground, on my knees every single day, singing, praising, and fasting. Hallelujah. What I'm saying is very serious. That is the process we have. You're not going to fight your enemies with your hands. It is impossible. David did not fight with his hand. And then he had a little slim slingshot he had. Hallelujah. God did fight for him the same way God did fight for me. Even when Goliath was on the ground, and then it was about now to... To, to be completely killed and um, beheaded, David did not even have the tool to do that. You cannot behead someone with a sling. Sl- you understand? He had to take the, the, the Goliath's sword to cut his head because he did not have that kind of instrument. You do not need those kind of instruments. You just need God. I'm talking about a situation that... They wanted to kill me, just kill me, because they killed so many that, that I know. Amen? But I know what I did to stay alive. I know what I did, and I'm telling you what I did. I went on my knees. I prayed. I worshiped the Lord, and I fasted. And then God opened all the doors. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Verse 12 says, we have no power to face this vast army that is attacking us. We do not know what to do, but our eyes are on you. That's exactly what I did. I did not know what to do. I could not fight with my hands. I mean, I was extremely powerless. There there was nothing that I could do. I could do nothing for my family or myself. But my eyes were on God. I swear to God, my eyes were only on God. Sometimes you're going through things, and then you have your eyes on God, one eye there, and then one eye here. I'm asking you today, eh? please, both eyes on God. Yeah, God will direct you. If it's time to go, God will say, it's time to go. You wonder how I left this uh, city center apartment building and then I made it into Canada. You, you, you must be wondering how I did. Because enemies were everywhere. Killing everyone, you open your window and you see things, you close your window again. Brothers and sisters, prayer, faith is only the way. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Everything else, the people you know, or whatever, it, was not, it cannot work in this situation. Hallelujah. Verse 22 says, It is only when they started praying, praising, and worshiping that God brought confusion in the camp and they started to kill each other. Hallelujah. For something you're going through, I am asking you to go to the other level. I'm asking you to pray more than before. To worship more than before, hallelujah. To fast more than before, hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. It is here that we battle. We battle on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Friday. If really you have a problem, if really one of your family members have have a problem, bring the problem here. Bring the problem. Come into an environment that can help you, that can build up your faith. Hallelujah. If you stay in your own environment, one eye on the TV 
and listening to what this person is saying, you are now going to defeat the enemy. Hallelujah. Because the tactic of the enemy is to fast, to, to feast before the end of the game. The battle has not started yet, but the devil is telling you, game is over. That is what the TV is telling you, game is already over. And here we're telling you, can you breathe? You, you know, when someone is almost dead, you take the, the arm, and then if he says, okay, the, the person is still breathing, hallelujah. That's what we do here on Wednesday. We lift your, your, your arm. If it falls, maybe you're dead, right? <laughs> but if there's still strength there, then... The game is not over yet. God has not said the last word. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am very serious. They prayed. They started praising and worshiping. And God brought confusion. Oh, Father, this morning here, I pray that you bring confusion in the enemy's camp. Hallelujah. Amen. Confusion in the name of Jesus, sir. Confusion, this enemy that is after your children. Confusion in the name of Jesus. Children are doing stupid things. We will bring confusion in the camp of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Oh, the enemy who is disturbing marriages. Oh, I pray that confusion goes into the camp of the enemy. Leave marriages alone in the name of Jesus. Some of us, the devil has a grip on your finances. I am bringing confusion in the camp of the enemy. Release our finances. Release our finances in the name of Jesus. Some of us is your health. The devil is threatening your health. I am bringing confusion in the camp of the enemy. Release. Leave me alone. Leave my health alone. Hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Your prosperity has been blocked. Hallelujah. Money is coming in. And then mine is going out. You do not understand why. Oh, hallelujah. I am going to close. When money comes in, money does not go out anymore. Let me bring confusion in the camp of the enemy today. Oh, hallelujah. And Cross Point Fellowship Church. The enemy has been attacking Cross Point for more than a year. Cross Point Fellowship growth is under attack. Would you join us on Wednesday, Tuesday, and Friday? Would you join us to fight the enemy? To bring confusion into the camp of the enemy? Oh, hallelujah. Confusion in the name of Jesus. There is nothing we can do, but the Lord can do everything. Hallelujah. We are powerless. We are limited. But with the Lord, we are very powerful. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's put all our trust in the Lord. Hallelujah. Let's put our trust in the Lord. I decree that no weapon formed against you shall prosper. Let the, the, the weapons be formed. They will always be formed, but they will not prevail. Hallelujah. They will not in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. They will not prevail in the church. They will not prevail in their families. They will not prevail at work. You will just advance like the enemy did not exist. The enemy will be there, but the enemy will be confused. They will start fighting among them. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Confusion. Confusion. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Confusion. Hallelujah. The immigration issue will bring confusion there. Hallelujah. Job issues will bring confusion there. Hallelujah. Sickness will bring confusion there in the name of Jesus. Amen. I trust this morning that God will fight for us. Yes. I trust this morning that God will fight our battles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hey, God is faithful and God is able. Yes. Hallelujah. Hey, just, just repeat it for yourself. In my problems, God is faithful and God is able. God will fight our battles means when God fights your battle, no more anxiety, no more fear, no more depression, no more discouragement, and nothing. Nothing. This doesn't mean the enemy is not there. This doesn't mean disease is not there. Problems are not there. They will be there. God said, stand up and go to the battlefield. 
go there. So you really have to stand up and you really have to go. And you really have to believe that God will fight your battle. You understand the process? Hallelujah. God will fight your battle. Even if your situation seems hopeless, God will fight your battle. You are too overwhelmed. Don't worry, but don't doubt God because God will fight your battle. Hallelujah. A problem is big or too big or too difficult, too complicated. Yes, for you, but not for God. Hallelujah. Not for God. Let me remind you what happened at the Red Sea. The children of Israel were leaving uh, Egypt with all the, everything that Egyptians gave to them. And then all of a sudden, Pharaoh said, no, where are you going? We, we, we're going to kill them. We're not talking about one person. The families and families and families. They went to the direction that Moses was showing. And then they got to the Red Sea. Now what? What do we do now? We are stuck now. What do we do? But they remembered what the Bible says. Take your position. Stand still. Stand firm. And God will move on your behalf. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Oh, I see some people sleeping. Son, come here. Come. He, this is Moses. Hallelujah. Amen. Just for today. <laughs> This is Moses who represents Israel, the children of Israel. And then, not me, but somewhere here, the enemy. I'm not the enemy, okay? Yeah. So you are going to cross the river, but you can't because you can't. Hallelujah. The children of Israel are behind him, following him. Can you send, step up to, to, the, to the edge? Can you do that? Okay. Don't jump, okay? <laughs> This is the Red Sea. This is water. He cannot go anywhere. But enemies are behind with the weapons, right? Trying to kill him. They are coming. They are coming. They are powerful. And then he is stuck now. He does not know where to go. Hallelujah. Psalm 27, 14 says, They needed to lift up their heads, open the doors, and let the glory of God come. Amen. Hallelujah. When you lift up your, your hands, when you look at him, only him, your heart turned toward him, he will come to defend you. Yes. Yes. Eh? Yes. You know what God did? God opened the Red Sea. Open. You can go, buddy. You see? Thank you. God opened the Red Sea. There was water on the left and water on the right. Still, the water was afraid. Could not even move. You know, the water was like this. And then the land was dry in the middle. I said dry. Amen. They crossed, all of them. God blocked the enemy. If you read further, that's not the, what I'm, I'm trying to say. God blocked them. They could not move forward. It was night on the camp of the Egyptian. It was night in the camp of the children of Israel, but it was dark in the middle. They could not see what was happening. And then the children were able to go. Hallelujah. This is what God will do. God will part the Red Sea for you to escape your enemy. But you have to lift your head, open your arms, let the glory of God come in. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You, you understand how God can switch things. The battle that was between the children of Israel and Egyptians turned out to be the battle between God and the Egyptians. Yes. Hallelujah. While the children of Israel were going. I pray that God will do the same for you. Amen. Regardless what you're going through. It may be a disease, very complicated. God will part the Red Sea for you Amen. just because you have decided to turn your heart toward him. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. I am very serious. We use the weapons we have. 
We fight with the weapon we have. We fight spiritually. Don't let this spiritual laziness become a norm. Everything becomes optional. Optional. Sunday morning, um, you open the window, you look outside, uh, it's, it's, it's snowing. My brother and my sister, they travel two hours every day to come to the service on Sunday. They live far, but they come. So opening your window, do not do that anymore. Just go. <laughs> Just go. We never miss a service here. If it's minus 40, if it's snowing crazy, whatever is happening, we come. Hallelujah. Yeah. Those are the weapons we have to fight spiritually. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. 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 God is in control. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Exodus chapter 14 verse 4 says, I will cause the Egyptians to be stubborn. I will cause them to pursue you. I, the Lord, will come to defend you, and my victory over Pharaoh and his army will bring me honor. Then the Egyptians will know that I am the Lord. Brothers and sisters, give to God the opportunity to declare, I am the Lord. Talk to your enemy and say, it's not over yet. I'm still breathing. Because I'm still breathing, I will praise my God. I will praise him, and then I will ask him to come rescue me. The honor and the glory is for him. It's not for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Take your position. Stay still, and the miracle will happen. Brothers and sisters, I know there is days where you see nothing. There is no way. This one, no way around me. No way. I thought about that when I found myself in a prison, and and this is not a prison. This is not a prison. This is not a prison. A prison is not a place where they open the door and shoot, and then ask you guys, oh, anybody there, there? Okay, go bury them. This is not a prison. I found myself in that kind of thing. I, I remember the papers that I had explaining why I was in prison. It, this is not a joke. It was saying doubtful morphology. That means your look is bizarre. You, you don't look like people from here. Do you, it's not a joke. This is the capital city. Ten millions of people live there. Hmm? Very educated people. You, you don't look like people from here. And that's it. <laughs> there was nothing else I've done. But yet, I had to face people killing each other and stuff like that every single day. So it, it came to my mind that there was no way out. Because it could be me at any time. I, I told you some of these things. It could have been me at any time, day or night. Amen? Amen. Sometimes I, th- I thought there was no way. But Israel people thought the same too. They were cornered. Yeah. They said there is no way out. We're dying. In order for you to stay still, you have to believe that there is a way. Amen. You have to believe that God who created everything, is on your side. That's the condition. That's the secret. If you believe that, there is no fear, there is no panic, there is no hopelessness. I got to the point when I got the word from my wife. God said this. I swear to God, that day was the last day I panicked. Because God has already said something. Who are you to change what God said? Yes, I was afraid sometimes. But this was not fear. When when you shoot at me, I mean, I could be dead. I mean, it, it was real. You understand? It happened. It was real. 
So sometimes I was afraid. But every night I was sleeping. We could not lay down and sleep. There was no room. It's like they take 5,000 people, they put them here. Every day, 10, 20 will be dead because they cannot breathe. So whatever position I was in, I was able to sleep. No uh, nightmares. Until today, 20 years later, my wife can testify. I don't have nightmares. I don't think about those things because they are behind me. I forgot them because I was able to forgive them. Hallelujah. I swear to God, I sleep like a baby every single night. Hallelujah. There is no other secret. To be still, you have to believe that God is on your side and God will come actually to defend you. Hallelujah. Let me show you how fear looks like. Exodus chapter 14, 11 to 14. I, I, I think we, we read this. The children of Israel said to Moses, What is because there is no graves in Egypt that you brought us here into the desert to die? Why did you bring us here? You didn't have enough space there to bury us? What have you done to us by bringing us out of Egypt? Yes, we were slaves, but at least we had life. Did we say to you in Egypt, leave us alone? Let us serve the Egyptians? Didn't we? I will have been better for us to serve the Egyptians than to die in the desert. Brothers and sisters, this is called fear. Moses answered to the people, do not be afraid, stand firm. And you will see the deliverance of the Lord will bring you today. Amen. Hallelujah. The Egyptians you see today, you will never see again. Amen. The Lord will fight for you. Hallelujah. You need only to be still. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let me prophesy today. The enemy that is attacking your finances, let's say it loudly. You won't see anymore. You will see no more, hallelujah. Amen. You have to believe it. Amen. Am I the only one whose finances are under attack, hallelujah? Amen. Am I the only one? Uh -huh. So let's proclaim the enemy that is attacking my finances. I will see no more, hallelujah. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. The devil will try to convince you about what is logical. How can you cross the Red Sea? It's impossible. It's logical. Hallelujah. The devil will say, what are you praying for? It's impossible. It, it has never happened before. It's we're killing everyone. You too, you're going to die. That's what the enemy will tell you. The enemy will tell you, you're sick, you have cancer. And what, you, you're praying, but you're wasting your time. I understand all of that. They are only based on facts. I'm hurting. I have no money. I, they are, those are facts. Hallelujah. I know it is not logical. Yes, it is impossible. Yes, it has never happened before. But remember, God does not care about facts. He, he does not care about facts. Don't be disturbed, okay? Because the devil who is telling you all those things only comes to destroy you, disturb, destroy. But one thing that I know that the Bible is telling me, the victory is on my side. Yes. Hallelujah. It is not logical because God's ways are not my ways anyways. It cannot be logical. If it's logical, that means God's ways are my ways. But the Bible says God's ways are not my ways. So if it's not logical, it's not a problem. If it is impossible, Matthew 19, 26, 26 says, with man, this is impossible. But with God, all things are possible. All things are possible. Hallelujah. Yes, there seems to be no way. But Isaiah 43, 16 says, I am the one who made the road through the sea. A pathway through the surging waters. I am the one who makes a way where there is no way. Hallelujah. 
Hallelujah. Yeah. Aren't you excited? Yeah. Let me finish. Hallelujah. Here is what a lack of faith produces. Because the children of Israel all the time were having issues, believing issues, they were doubting God, they're murmuring, they believed that God could not defend them, could not bring them to the promised land. Well, God does not like that. God does not like people who are told every single Sunday, but still they murmur, still they don't believe, still they doubt. God punished them. They did not see, that generation did not see the promised land. He was bringing them to the promised land. But because of whatever was going through their mind, for 40 years he made them turn there, maybe in the hope that this time they will get it. But because they did not get it, because they, they keep doubting, they, they did not make it in, into the promised land. Hallelujah. They did not. Hallelujah. If you want to make it into the promised land, you have to stop doubting. You have to listen once for all and give your all heart to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. The problem you have and I have, we forget very quickly all the battles that God has won for us. We just forget that. Every new problem is like you've never been in a problem. It's like you don't know God, God, what? Oh my God, my son, my... just remember. If you cannot remember what has happened to you, remember what happened to me. If you can't remember what happened to me, remember what happened to these people. Take your Bible to read. If, if you don't remember, I don't know. Just read and you will see what God has done. Hallelujah. I'm warning you. If you do not take your position, if you do not stay still, the victory is not on your side. The victory belongs only to those who put God first. They remain still. They take their position and they remain still. And God now will bring deliverance to them. Amen. Hallelujah. Be very careful. Don't be one leg in, one leg out. The devil will steal your faith. And without faith, you wouldn't be here. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. You will have a lack of assurance that God is really in control. God is in control of everything. Hallelujah. Regardless of the size of what you're dealing with, God is in control. Amen. God is able. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. God is in control does not mean we are exempt from showing up to the battlefield. Hallelujah. You have to come to the battlefield with the weapons that you have. If your enemy has more um, weapons than you, it's not a problem because God is going to fight for us. When you go back to what we just read in Second Chronicles, they went to the battlefield. They waited until God dealt with these enemies, confused the enemies, you know what happened after? When they went to check, because it was fire, fire. When they went to check when it was now calm, they were all dead. Do you know what the children of Israel did? Collect the weapons. You came empty-handed. They collect the weapons for three days. Three days. They had a lot of things to bring home. They were outnumbered one to ten when they came there. When the battle was done, the enemies, all of them were dead. Yes. Brothers and sisters, if you believe everything we have been uh, preaching, I will ask you to stand up as we're closing. Just close your eyes and focus on the Lord. As the Bible says, some will trust in horses and chariots, but we will trust in the Lord. We trust our God to come on, on our behalf, to come and secure us, to come and protect us. We're presenting to you, Lord, this morning 
all our doubts, our problems, our difficulties, financially, spiritually, oh, hallelujah, physically, uh, hallelujah, with the hope that you will battle for us, hallelujah. We are empty-handed. We don't have the weapons to fight, hallelujah. We don't have the strength to fight, hallelujah. But our eyes are on you, you and you alone. We're praying this morning, Lord, that you confuse the enemy. The enemy who is attacking our finances, confuse them in the name of Jesus. The enemy that is after our children, hallelujah, confuse them in the name of Jesus. Let the enemies fight among them and finish them, hallelujah. And let our kids prosper and learn to love Jesus and to know Jesus and to spread the word, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. I pray for every single member of this congregation. This word, hallelujah, be written on their heart so they know that they have to take their position and stand still while you're fighting the battle, hallelujah. Hallelujah. I will ask the worship team to lead us in a song and I will come back to close the service. Amen. May God bless you. Can we just lift up our hands as we worship? Your grace. 